Let's get to a little bit of uh, stuff actually from from yesterday. So we had Packers wide receiver Romeo Dobbs on the show. Perloff, we were happy to have him. A, you know, exciting young rookie for the Packers. Great season. Packers are really in a crossroads here. As we're chit-chatting with him, we start asking about his relationship with Aaron Rodgers. And I asked him this question. Can you give us an outside of the facility hanging out with Aaron Rodgers story? I didn't get a chance to hang out with him, but not one I, time. I, I, he didn't I, take you guys out not one time. Um, I mean, as far as being around 12, uh, I, I'd say possibly it's always been football. So, I mean, in the building on the practice field, there was never a time where, you know, got the really. All right. So that clip has got around a little bit as things tend to do when people come on our show, but Perloff, Really, like, Rodgers is kind of split here in terms of people who have been critical of him for not, you know, making more of an effort to get to know these rookies. He knew he was going to be relying on them through this season. Um, You know, didn't want to go to the OTAs. That's totally within his right. But never really developed chemistry until it was, quite frankly, too late for the Packers. So, in some ways, Rodgers is getting criticized for this. And others are saying, listen, Rodgers is 20 years older than Romeo Dobbs. Why would they be hanging out at all? What side do you fall on? Yeah, I mean, in an ideal world, he is spending time outside the room with him. And I think Tom Brady would have done that. So I definitely am uh, anti Rodgers on this one. I understand the 20-year 20, 20 gap. That totally makes sense. I don't expect them to be best friends, but I do expect Rodgers to reach out. I don't totally buy that chemistry thing. I do, but I blame the, what kind of organization has a Super Bowl contender and is relying on two rookie wide receivers. That's weak on the organization's part. Okay, but th- once you're Rodgers and you're yeah. – you, you're, you're stuck in that a, spot and you sign the deal like like maybe you you know you're hoping that once Devonte adams leaves that the organization is going to do something about it but you know you knew that Devonte adams was gone you knew that they got draft picks for him and you were going to go in with you know a young team you ask for randall cobb you got your guy tunyon you got your guy mercedes lewis it's not like mercedes lewis is 37 <laughs> and saying it's that's he's obviously important to Rogers. so you're t- is there any other contender who's ever had to rely on a second round pick out of North Dakota State and a fourth round pick out of Nevada it was this was on the organization I'm sure part of the reason Rogers didn't embrace him he's like what's going on here yeah but I see uh, it is the cheapest wide receiver room by 50 miles in the NFL Okay, they have not put enough weapons around. I think they were probably taken a little, maybe caught off guard about Devontae Adams. That's not an excuse. Could be. But I think they were a little caught off guard by that. They also have a really robust run game. So what they may have lacked in the passing game, which I know you have Aaron Rodgers, so you're going to want a good passing game. But they did make up for in having, you know, Aaron Jones and also having uh, A.J. Dillon. So it's not like they were, the cupboard was totally empty there. Well, how did that running game work out when it counted against Detroit in Week 18? Yeah, I mean, that, that there was a lot of things that went wrong in that game. And it's not like Rodgers played amazing in that game either. So here's the thing. I was just – when I when you heard that clip and I was like, wow, he never took you guys out once, that was me honest surprise. I, I thought at yeah. some point, just because I said this yesterday, but I'd done a show with Bart Scott. He used to have friends – have teammates, rather, over on a Monday night, watch a game, you know, watch Monday Night Football – bond a little bit you know it's not like you have to go out in green bay if aaron Rodgers feels like you know he's in a fishbowl a little bit and and that is too much have the guys over to your house like i was a i was a little surprised he had never done yeah i'm surprised you i did not expect that answer i i'm not surprised by the way everybody picked it up because it fits this narrative about Rodgers. That Rodgers is a me first guy. Well, I think it's – see, I think the me first is a little unfair for Rodgers. More it's not, of a loner than a me first guy, I, I feel. I think mm-hmm. he kind of feels like he's doing football at like a Ph.D. level, mm-hmm. which you could argue he is. Like he is a, he has mastered the sport. And if you're a rookie coming in, well, you've got a lot of catching up to do before we'd be on the same level. Right. You know, and so – I guess is that a me first? I think it's well, more just like he's. You never heard of that Rodgers might be a me first guy? <laughs> no, I've heard it. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, I, I think there's a little bit of that out there. Yeah. I mean, me first is that I'm not talking to my family because. Well, see, that's I hate all, to do that, though. I hate to do that. Because, but we anyway, don't know anything about that relationship. So that's not much, fair. There's so much about Rodgers that portrays him in that light. And I don't. I actually met him a number of times and thought he was very nice. Yeah. Uh, so I have no idea. You're right. We don't know the first thing about what happened with his family, but 
there's definitely somebody he's like he seems eccentric i mean obviously he's not totally a loner him and aj hawk are best friends he would spend two weeks of the summer living in aj hawk's house he told us a dp show yeah so it's just, i don't i don't really understand this either i was as surprised as you were yeah, you should have a. I like what you said. Have him over for a barbecue. Is that that hard? I, I just am surprised. Maybe and maybe loner was the wrong word. You're right, it, Maggie. I think pinpointed it. It feels like he thinks she's just smarter than everybody and better than everybody, and that they I don't didn't deserve, say better. No, you said better. I'm saying that. I'm not saying better. But that he thinks that he's smarter and better and just more advanced than everybody. The way he talks about the woke media and the way he talks about all these other people and all these other things that people are saying and doing and all this stuff. He just he comes off like just so pompous and arrogant and like conceited and thumbing his but that's, nose. That's to you. I mean, that's how you're interpreting it. That's there's how a I'm lot, interpreting it. But there's it feels, a lot of Aaron Rodgers people who think that he comes across sounding really smart and he comes across sounding like he has a good perspective on things. Like that's just your read on it. Sure, but I, I think what I'm what I'm trying to say is between the Romeo Dobbs stuff and all these other stories that we've heard, whether it's his family or the dating and all these, you know, Greg Jennings has spoken out against him for years because of he was so close to Favre and he saw how Rodgers was. And there's all these people. There's so much smoke around the Packers organization about these things with Rodgers that eventually you start getting this feeling that like there's something about him that just rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Listen, and, I, and I just want, don't want to confuse the guy having a personality for meaning it's a bad personality, right? Like he is out there. He's answering questions on McAfee. He's trying. I think he's trying to be you know pretty forthright when he does it. And you know, this I think is more about knew going into the season that he was going to have to rely on some rookie wide receivers. We knew that they didn't play, replace Devontae Adams. I think what baffled a lot of us was you're a Super Bowl contender, right? Or you should be. Why wouldn't you be doing everything possible to try to get these rookies up to speed? And that means showing up for OTAs maybe. And that means maybe having guys over to the house. And that means maybe getting to know guys a little bit more. You know, Rodgers has talked about him sitting alone in the cafeteria because he kind of wants to see who will come up and sit down next to him like it's a freaking science experiment or some social, you know, anthropological, you know, thing he's doing. Like, maybe you just go over to somebody and say, hey, can I sit down? Where are you from? And it just doesn't seem like he wants to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think Mike is right, though, about I don't agree with this, but the public perception of what Mike was saying is is out there. I think that's why people jumped on this. Yeah. It, I think they see this as consistent with... For example, I'm not going to get into the vaccine, but a lot of people portray that as a me first, not a team first thing. Right, because he, he was... ended up missing a game because of that, right? Well, no, it was more because I think he misled people. Well, yeah, but I think he wasn't vaccinated, which hurt the team. Well, I mean, but a lot of guys, even if you were vaccinated, got COVID and had to miss games. But I think it's the it was the immunization. No, immunized, no, but the, remember the rules were way different. Right, right. He got to be in the media room with people with not without a mask on. Like there yeah. were different rules for people who had taken the vaccine and who hadn't. And so he got to operate as if he was one of the people who had taken the vaccine, even though he hadn't. But I think he missed a game, right? He I, did miss a game, yeah. Right, where if he was vaccinated, he might not have had to miss that game or something no, along those lines. I think he lines. actually had COVID. I think he had to he miss that game. He probably would have missed the game either way, yeah, but yeah. he may not have gotten it had it been had Yeah, I seem to remember. But there was that, that narrative, hey, team first guys get the shot even if they don't want to. That was out there. I think That's there's... Everybody, I'm telling you, I think people view Aaron Rodgers as a, as a me first guy, and this seems very consistent. Yeah, no, but I, I'll tell you the alternative. It took off like wildfire. This his quote. The alternative of him not going to OTAs is he might have, if they had forced him to go to if he had gone to OTAs, he knowing himself might have said, I might just walk away. So <laughs> I, think, I think it was really? yeah because I, OTAs are grueling for veteran quarterbacks. They don't want to go in to May and June to Wisconsin. So he might have said, well, if that's the case, and I he's probably balancing, do I want to play at all? He's like, you can have me, but this is all. Your you're going to get yeah but then like ask yourself you know rogers has said i don't want to just be half in i got to be bleep yeah in it's like if you're if it's between going to otas or like retiring or not i mean would you say the same thing about brady you know brady only started missing the otas pretty recently right and he doesn't go to them now he took 11 days off in the middle of training camp we thought that was very strange for him we said so um but I get the feeling that Brady, I mean, I don't know if Rodgers is doing this too, but had the guys to Montana, has them over to try to get chemistry with them. I, don't I, get, know. I get the feeling that if if it wasn't this situation, they both would have retired. I, I don't think they well, were going to practice about, in, in May. We're talking about two different things though, right? I guess like what this is, 
is yes it's about the otas and i brought that up and i get it but it's also about like in season was there not a moment when you thought hey maybe we should go to dinner <laughs> you know and, and or come people, to my house for dinner all these comments i'm reading on social media about it like i'm not going to hang out with someone who's 20 years older or younger than me at my office or from my work dude it's not the same thing you hanging out with your boss who's 20 years older than you if you work in like you know construction or you work in insurance yeah insurance is not the same thing as a 40 year old quarterback hanging out with his rookie wide receiver when his legacy contracts and you know franchise are on the line like it's a completely different monster it just drives me crazy when people try to compare athletes actions to how they would act in work too it's it's not the same it's not the it's it's i totally agree with you on that it's not the same kind of workplace as our workplace it's just not that being said i would rather do anything than have to hang out with any of you people outside of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, too late because we're all going to Phoenix together in two weeks. And we're going to be going to breakfast and we're going to be going to dinner. We're going to be hanging out, I, going to the Grand Canyon. Just not with each other. <laughs> I have to be honest, I have never been in an office where people hang outside less than this one we're in right now. <laughs> in my, in the history of my whole work life, yeah. I, yeah. I was shocked. I was like, what? what's going on here? I know. It's kind of funny coming, especially coming from Sports Illustrated, where we're like basically like, every friday <laughs> oh, it was yeah, a very we, social office and then came here it was like so what are we all doing and it's like everyone hello are you changing here? the culture around here are you like the new glue guy pearl off you walk <laughs> in and you just change the whole culture of the building well, i everyone think it's, just start hanging it's out. a matter of radio shows that have different hours is the key reason that that yeah. happens everyone comes and goes at completely different times but I mean, like, what was our, our big Christmas party? We <laughs> in the break room. Like, <laughs> we were. We I, even I, go I haven't to it. seen ninety nine percent of these people in a restaurant. Did, did you not? Did you miss Lunar New Year a couple days ago? They had like Chinese food in the lobby. We miss everything. No, it was fantastic. We miss everything. All right. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, oh, yeah, man, dumplings I, and, and fried rice. It was fantastic. Oh, I wish I had known.